Um, it's been almost 30 years now since the writing of, of Collage City. For the better part of that, uh, for the better part of a year, a whole year, Colin and I got together at his house, that house in Rhetoric Place that Graham was speaking of, in those rooms. Every evening during the week, as well as a good part of the day, almost every Saturday and Sunday for that year. We talked and we read and we wrote and we talked more and read more, wrote more. Sissy was there uh, most of that time. I can't speak for Colin, uh, but for me this was um, an extremely fortunate and remarkable experience. Because of the nature of the work, we had to get something done. We were committed to producing something. Uh, others were depending on us producing it. Uh, the discussions we had were more literally focused than any I have had with Colin before or since that time. As all of you know, Colin's mind could operate at two or three places at one time. He could move in and out of conversations with others and at the same time be conducting a continuous internal conversation with himself. In this case, the inside and outside communications were often on the same subjects. This was a wonderful time, uh, a magnificent time. We invited people over to talk about things. Uh, we, we worked uh, late, late into the night. Uh, with this work, we were, we were needless to say articulating a definite position, a number of biases, closely held beliefs. Yet during this work, I came to realize more and more uh, what I knew vaguely earlier, that Collins' thinking, his mode of inquiry, in its best and most intense form, transcended these biases, transcended the, pos the positions we held, and occupied a territory of pure curiosity as to the true nature of things. Collins could see meaning and importance um, in mundane and apparently inconsequential places, in places where others so little or sometimes nothing at all. The results of this process were often unexpected and beautiful in their simple lucidity. I'm thinking here of several things, but the one that comes to mind is, is uh, a couple of seemingly light examples um, of this in his wonderful talk during the Cornell tribute that some people have mentioned a few years ago, where his reflections led him to identify the advent of the coffee table is the beginning and the end of Western domestic culture. <laughs> Suddenly, a misguided but apparently harmless piece of furniture took on sinister and debilitating eyes. <laughs> this is how Colin was able to, to thrust at, 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 at you something which you had never thought about and it became so real and so palpable all at once and yet so amusing. Or during that same, uh, during that same talk, um, he put up a slide of the current British 10-pound note with its rather inept and casual graphics and his views, his, his views of a cricket game and a, a, an engraving of a slightly seedy Charles Dickens and Collins' comments, I cannot bear to live in a country with money that looks like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> this little comment, Contains hundreds, of, contains hundreds of facets um, of, uh, that, that involve Col both, Col both Colin's regard for and his frustration with his homeland. Um, and this was something for Colin which was a never-ending uh, debate within himself. This endless process of inquiry and reflection was relentless, wholly unsentimental, I imagine very difficult, probably at times extremely satisfying but hard to control and solitary. Ultimately, this was a profoundly lonely territory and Colin was there pretty much all by himself. Uh, for me, uh, this experience with my, uh, with my tiny awareness of this operation established some kind of measure or unattainable standard, a standard that can, uh, can never go away. Uh, Colin was a man of great kindness and humanity, although he wouldn't like that term. Playfulness and mischief. Although he was indifferent to what could be called intellectualism, uh, more than indifferent, I suppose, he was also a person of near absolute intellectual integrity. We as his students trusted him 
because we knew this, and we knew that uh, we knew that the, the fundamental um, uh, the fundamental honesty of his intentions. So now, again, think of, thinking back of that place, Renwick Place, and what Graham was speaking of, there will be no more of these uh, of these long, long conversations. No more late night calls. No more Xeroxes in the mail. No more big picture books as chairs and tables and plans to to help form, to help uh, hone our our flabby eyes. At the same time, for those of us here and elsewhere who knew him, who loved him, and who tried to understand him, his style, his cast of mind, and his generosity of spirit will remain an indelible presence.